Hi, Casper here on the 12th of December 2017 with something of a dual purpose recording really. I am going to taste this wine you see in the foreground uh, and I just wanted to give you a bit of a chat about my trip to Burgundy which was a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I was down there tasting the 2016 vintage and a fascinating thing that is as well. But Let's start with this wine, which in itself is pretty fascinating, really. This is 2010 vintage of a, a lowly thing, a Bourgogne Blanc, uh, but from a producer that's anything but lowly, Bachelet Mono, uh, who are based in Marron, right down in the south of the Côte d'Or, just before you get into the Côte Chalonnaise. Um, so, yeah, fascinating why. Well, it's age, for one thing. I, you know, I remember years ago, we used to source some real nice white burgundy from a producer in Chassin Morachet and I asked them one day, when do you drink your premier cru Chassins? And they said, um, yeah, generally between five and eight years. So that's for some pretty grand wines. This is a, a just a basic Bourgogne Chardonnay um, at seven years of age. And you can tell just by looking at it that it's a wine in perfect state of health. It's beautiful, sort of pale canary vivid yellow with green lights in it. It just looks like a extremely healthy thing. This wine, by the way, an assemblage of several parcels, I think all of which are just outside the delimited Poligny uh, commune. Uh, so from, from some pretty reasonable soils, but oh, it just smells fresh and vibrant and subtle and elegant and that, just a, a, a sort of mix of fascinating citrus fruits, green orange, lemon particularly, a little nutty wisp of oak, but great cut and definition to the nose, you know, this, it's not a broad thing, it doesn't go that way, it's, it's defined, it's upright, it's energetic, it's um, just, just delicious as well, let's have a sip. Um, super, a very, you know, that's a Bachelet Mono style. It's almost like as expressive as a Riesling, you know, it's transparent, it's energetic, it's whip crack acidity. And I think, um, you know, the wines of white wines of, of Burgundy, one finds more and more acidity these days. And I think, possibly for, for a couple of reasons I could think of, one, I think it's recognized that whatever, whatever terroir is in these wines that component is carried in the um, in the within the acidity of the wine you know without uh, acidity wine it really has no character uh, be it delicious or not um, uh, secondly I wonder whether you know they're picking earlier they're making fresher wines um, perhaps also to, to um, try and obviate this this risk of, of premature oxidation um, Anyway, that's that's just me guessing on the subject, but um, just a, a stunning wine, a very typical of Bachelet Mono. And in fact, I saw Bachelet Mono on the Tuesday of my trip. Uh, but let's wind it back. I arrived on, on Sunday evening, and I, I'd completely forgotten that uh, it was the Sunday of the Hospice de Bone auction. Uh, now, those of you who don't know, uh, the Hospice de Bone auction is an auction of barrels of new wine. And this year, they're auctioning the 2017 vintage uh, masses of barrels of wine from vineyards that over the decades and centuries have been donated by their owners uh, to the hospice uh, to be sold for, for charitable distribution of funds um, and uh, the money involved is, is extraordinary. I mean, typically merchants used to go down and buy a barrel of this, a barrel of that and then get local merchants and negotiate to look after the barrel in their cellar and eventually bottle it and the um, importer could have their name on the on the label. Um, now they've opened it up to private individuals and um, I mean, the whole world descends on Burgundy for that one day, that one sale. Uh, and it was absolutely heaving when I arrived. The Place Carnot in the middle of town, uh, stuff full of stalls selling 
you know, everything under the sun really, and the bars crammed with people drinking beer and smoking, all chatting away. Uh, and by the same time, the next day, everyone had gone, and Bone was back to um, the sleepy place that it is. And those of you who know Bone will will know it. It really is a remarkably sleepy little town. Uh, so uh, fascinating, and and fascinating to taste the sixteens. Uh, lots being written about them. Um, you possibly heard about the problems in the growing season. And the biggest problem was, was frost, and, and frost in itself not really an issue. Uh, fro what frost does is freezes water around the new, the new buds. Um, the, the problem, and in fact in many ways, frost can, doing that can protect the buds. The problem really comes when the, uh, the sun comes out uh, in the morning and shines on, uh, on those um, frozen buds. And of course that ice around the bud acts as a magnifying glass and, and just really burns all the buds off, off the plant. Um, some vineyards lost almost 100% of their production, uh, others 80, and right up to some vineyards that lost very little. Um, what is for sure is, is the, the quantity produced. Um, it will be greatly reduced in 16. Uh, really a culmination of, of a number of years where the quantities have been minimised by um, hail and, and frost and, and various other, other reasons. Um, the good news is is that the, the quality is absolutely outstanding, and they're you know style of wine that I think nobody could fail to love. They are well, first of all, they have character in spades. The expression of sense of place, terroir, whatever you want to call it, is clearly defined in these wines. I mean, the, the white, white wines reminded me a bit of um, a bit of the fourteens. Uh, that cut, that that precision, um, but. Allied to that, a rather riper sort of riper fruit, uh, and fleshier wines. They're wines of great joy and, and luminous beauty, I must say. Reds as well. I mean, the red wines are pure, utterly delicious, but have that extraordinary sense of place. I think they're wines that can be drunk in the relatively near near term, uh, but I think they'll also keep tremendously well. These guys saw them on the Tuesday. Uh, a fabulous range, you know that. I, I've said it before, I think this is almost the future of Chardonnay making, you know, um, whether in Bogny or overseas. It's, it's, you know, turning Chardonnay into something that can so clearly communicate its sense of place. Uh, Riesling like, as, I, as I've just said. Um, so, 2016, a vintage really to, to buy. I'm, I'm uh, securing allocations at the moment. Um, just stunning wines. Um, and this, a stunning wine in itself. Uh, 2010 Bourgogne Blanc from Bachelet Mono, a wonderful thing. And please don't ignore these Bourgogne wines, Bourgogne Rouge, Bourgogne Blanc. Uh, greater and greater efforts being made to make something really worthwhile out of them, and I think they offer tremendous value. Um, so, yeah, wholeheartedly recommend 16 and wholeheartedly recommend um, Bachelet Mono.